morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Sunday after Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a blessed Thanksgiving and enjoyed great food and great socialization with all their friends and family. I know with ours it was pretty entertaining, so that's a fantastic thing. <laughs> um, I'm going to say a blessing to our hunters that are out there today and yesterday and in the coming weeks and the coming weeks behind us. Wishing them the best and safe hunting while they're out there. And for all of those that are still just napping out in the woods, hopefully you're getting a good night's rest out there. And stay warm. And stay warm. Our announcements for today, of course, we always have our scouts that are here on Monday evenings. We have our Christmas dinner that is coming up this Saturday night. That will be, the doors open at 5 o'clock, dinner will be at 6, and then 7 will ensue the craziness of a evidently family feud fun game that Catherine has brewing that could be pretty entertaining. Tickets are $12. Um, please see the sign, the sign up sheet out in the hallway there if you'd like to join us. The, youth, the uh, St. Jacob's Lutheran Church, they are also joining us. There are about 20 people strong that will be joining us that evening. We have our Christmas Eve service on the 24th at 5 p.m. And then our Christmas service is at the Lutheran Church on December 25th. We are combining services that day at 10 a.m. So both the Lutheran and the UCC will be meeting on Christmas Day at the Lutheran Church and will be having services at 10 a.m. Also, as a informational heads up, the Reads Across America will be done December 17th. The service will start at noon. If you're interested in coming and laying wreaths that day, please be here by 11.30 so that way you can get a little bit of instruction as to the protocols on how to lay the wreaths when you go out to do so. To let anyone know, well, let everybody know, anyone that is a family member that will be laying a wreath on a family member's grave, we will have that marked as long as we know about it ahead of time with a red flag. That means that anybody else that is showing up to volunteer to help lay wreaths, they are not to lay on a wreath, a grave that has a red flag because a family member will be doing that. They will be able to lay wreaths on anything that is a blue flag. So anything covering with a blue flag, you are more welcome to do so. We have eight Civil War graves that have been donated wreaths for that they will have red flags on and they're over on this side of the, on our side of the cemetery. And they will be taking care of that day. Matt Hoffman has graciously offered his uh, trumpet services for anybody who would like taps played when they go to lay the rings that morning. So he will be there. Uh, today, at this moment, we have 165 reeds accounted for, for donations. We do have a few donations yet to go in, but we are looking to cover at least 225. That should cover everybody and have ceremonial reeds. So that would be fantastic that day. And of course, can we all say a little prayer that we don't have rain or snow that day. I don't care about anything else, just no rain or snow. I'm not looking forward to it. Like I said to the Lutherans this morning, everybody says, have you been looking at the caterpillars? Because evidently the caterpillars are pretty much all black, which means what? Oh yeah, we're going to have so much snow, we don't know what to do with it. And normally that will happen on December 17th. We'll have that snow, we'll have to dig it out. So, so that's being said. We had a really nice turnout yesterday for our Santa's breakfast. We had approximately 40 people there that were able to come and enjoy the morning. Thank you very much to Tim Hinkle, who was our Santa that morning. While our hunters were out in the woods, the Santa was out there in the woods too. So he was a wonderful stand-in for us. Are there any other announcements that we have? Yes, Ms. Amy. I just have a question with Reeds Across America. Yes. Is the service inside the church or is it outside? It is outside at the monument and approximately 30 minutes long. Okay. Yeah. They do try to keep that shorter. Um, I know that we at Indian Town Gap in Arlington, the larger ones, it's a little bit of a longer service, but at a local level, we try to keep it shorter. Okay, so that'll be over 12 30, and that's when you lay your wreath, and then mm -hmm. after that, yep. you're free to go. Yep. And those that are, we will have one specific person that is for the family wreaths. So, we would send you that direction to that person, and then others can go to the, to the other reads. So that way, your reads are already spoken for and already right there. So, we have seen chaos in the zoo in the past, and we're trying to not have that happen this time. 
Any other questions? Thoughts, concerns? Heather. Yes, ma'am. Uh, coffee and donuts? Or oh, yes. There will be coffee, donuts, water, hot chocolate that day, provided by both churches. Um, Lisa Harris' mother is coordinating cookies, so if anybody would like to bake a dozen cookies to be able to feed those of us that would be standing around outside and laying wreaths, she's coordinating that. Touch base with them or touch base with me and we can get it over, that information over to her. So, anything else? If not, I hope we have a wonderful week. Thank Pray, you. Prayers for Deb this week? Prayers for Deb this week. She has surgery on Tuesday. So, Deb, if you're watching, Oh, we're all thinking of you, and you're going to make it through, and it's going to be wonderful at the end of the day. So you're going to get there and get great. So. I'll see the valley. Pardon me? Valley. For Valley, her grandmother is in the hospital right at the moment, and evidently a pretty spunky hospital patient right at the moment. Yes, she's great. Yes. So we wish her all the very best, and we hope to see her soon in our services, but we wish you the best, Valley. Anything else? There's a wasp flying around the church at the moment. I'm not sure if he forgot which season it is. <laughs> or what he's doing. So, without ado, I turn it over to Bob. Pastor Pastor Thank you. <laughs>
I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. We are glad. Whether we drove in or walked, whether we logged on or tuned in, we are glad to be here in this community with this family. It is a place of joyful hope, of radical welcome. It is a place where together we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us God's ways and that we may walk in God's paths. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope that we can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored as we watch and wait with all God's people for the promise to be fulfilled. The hymn is actually 154. 154.
peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. You may be seated. And at this time, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to decorate a Christmas tree. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about Christmas trees. From the earliest times before Christianity, greens, ivy, and pine, and spruce have all been regarded as holy plants because they stay green throughout the winter. And people from the oldest times used to take the boughs and hang them in their doors and their windows, believing that it would bless their homes, keep illness away, and keep them safe. Since then, greens have taken on a whole new meaning, and the Christmas tree has not always been with us. It really started about the 1500s. Martin Luther was walking home one night, thinking about his sermon, and he looked up into the sky, and it would have been far brighter than our night skies. Lots of stars were twinkling, and the pine trees were there. And he had a brilliant idea, and he went home, and he brought a tree into the house. represent the stars in the sky. And since that time, Christmas trees and lights have become a mainstay of our Christmas celebration and preparing for this holy day of Christmas. And so I'd like to invite you all to come forward. The ornaments here. Ornaments came around the 1800s with Queen Victoria. She was the one who introduced that. She loved her, her pretties. And so we have ornaments here. Take a few moments and put them on our tree. So come on up. And don't worry about where you put them. We can replace some of them up higher when we have a step stool.
blessings on our beautiful Christmas tree. May we remember it. It represents the light of Christ and the everlasting love of God in the green branches. If you will bow your heads and join me in the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our first reading comes from Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah at Jerusalem and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills, all the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that may, that may we walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Our next reading comes from Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within our gates. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be with you within your walls and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions shall say a prayer, a pray for your prosperity because of the house of the Lord our God. I will seek to do you good. Our next reading comes from the epistle of Romans, chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the monument, the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in revealing the drunken and drunkenness, reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and the stithiousness, not in the quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. And our last reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, you do not know on what day your Lord is coming, but understanding this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have left his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected time. This ends the reading of our Lord. Amen. Thank you.
you, Heather. Today we read some very traditional first Sunday of Advent texts, and some of the images that we encounter are beautiful, turning our um, spears into pruning hooks. You know, it's a beautiful symbol of peace. In Psalms, we talk about going up to the city of God and being welcomed, that God promises light and salvation. The Epistle of Romans tells us to put on Christ, to wear Christ. Mother Teresa used to always say we're called to be little Christs. We're called to embody some of what Jesus taught us. And then we come to our Matthew text, which is one of the apocalyptic texts. Now, apocalyptic texts have gotten a bad name. You know, the Left Behind series was written, and people like to predict the end times, but that's not really what Jesus is talking about here. Okay? We misinterpret, we like to sensationalize, but really what Jesus is saying to us is to be vigilant. That old admonition from your mother from the time you were two, pay attention, your teachers, pay attention, look at what's happening around you. Jesus used variations on this theme throughout his ministry. It's been interpreted many different ways. Be watchful, be careful, stay awake, keep on your toes, heads up. But essentially, the season of Advent tells us to pay attention. Pay attention to God, God's light, God in your life. Pay attention to each other. Pay attention to the suffering in the world. And also to the joy in the world. Attention is the key word here. Mindfulness is the current phrase we hear a lot, right? Be mindful, focus your brain. Pay attention to the presence of God <coughs> and the presence of the light of Christ in your life. It's tending toward that presence by paying attention that we can pay attention to our neighbors, the plight of our neighbors. It is intending God's presence in this world and being tender with God's presence, being able to live within the tension of God's presence. It's living intensely with God's presence. In Jesus' view, the kingdom is always near. There's no great big end time. Jesus is always here, ready to break through the barriers of our every day, to take hold of us, to impel us, to embrace us, to challenge us. And if we pay attention and if we're vigilant, we'll be able to find evidence of his all-encompassing love in the simple, ordinary, and sometimes tragic events that go to make up our daily lives. Advent is a time of expectation, a time of preparation, a time of urgency. As we enter this season with vivid, vital reminders of all the evils in our world, the evils caused by selfishness, ruthlessness, ambition, twisted hatred, and the craze for power at every level. What do we do with that? A lot of bad things happen in this world. The ugly drama is played out all over the place, even in our homes and in families and businesses in our community and our politics, in the bitterness and in the violence that are erupting in Ukraine and Russia where innocent people are having bombs rain down on them. And yet, even in the midst of that, there is light. This week, watching the news, there were women, brave women, who stayed in Kiev, capital, and were giving birth to babies. There, suffering the hardship of no heat, no light in their homes, they were still bringing new life into the world. In that darkness, they're bringing life. How do we respond to mass shootings? They're happening more often. It's a question we all need to ask, and there's no easy answers. But we need to confront the question, what do we do with that? It's not how we want to live in our country, where someone can walk into a school, or a store, or a bar, and start shooting people. Amidst all of that, we're called to pay attention to the inbreaking of God's love even in the worst of times. And if we look, we see it. Scripture reminds us during this first week of Advent that Advent, Advent is also a time of warning. 
We must not, we, we can't allow ourselves to slip into complacency with the routine of our daily lives, carried away by the like, Cyber Monday and the Black Friday specials and the shopping. There's nothing wrong with that. Christmas is a time to give those we love gifts and to, and to celebrate the wealth and the goodness we have to share. But there's so much more to it. It's also a time for us to recall lost opportunities of determining our steps to take advantage of coming opportunities to share the light of Christ, to be the hope of the world. Time for us to pay attention, pay attention to God's inbreaking. Jesus told us, the kingdom of God is all around us. You only have to have eyes to see. And so we need to prepare ourselves in the light of Christ and live lovingly with these tensions. Not only to be aware of our needs, but also the needs of others. In the letter to the Thessalonians, Paul writes, May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. That, my friends, is the gift of Christmas. The gift that speaks of light, dispelling the darkness. Much of the world today, if we pay attention again, is confused about this gift, where they refuse to accept it. But we know the light has entered the darkness in one born in a stable and whose earthly life ended on a cross. The babe of Bethlehem 2,000 years ago has given us a legacy and a mission. Love one another as I have loved you. This is his Christmas gift to us. Love light, service to others. Our God is one who loved us enough to enter the darkness with us in order to bring the light. God is there in the darkness. God is there. The darkness will always exist. It's part of the light, part of our world. But it's less intense and less ominous because of our God through the light of Christ. All will never be all right with the world, but Christ's call to be watchful and pray always is one that enables us to bring his light into the life of others, to bring it into our own life. Friends, we're called to be careful, to be caring, to be caregivers, to watch out not only for ourselves, but our brothers and sisters who share in this darkness and light this year will soon come to a close, and we will reaffirm our belief in all that Jesus has promised and has already accomplished in us, and we see in his promise a reason to hope for so much more, for a deepening of our own faith, our own love, for the power to overcome evil in ourselves, we all have a little, and in the world, for, for the spread of the gospel, the good news that through Christ there is salvation, there is redemption, there is light always. For us to proclaim that the darkness that overshadows the present moment, whether it be from sin or sickness, poverty, violence, sorrow, weakness, can be dissipated, can be lightened by the light of Christ, the Word made flesh. So pay attention this season. When you see the brilliant lights, remember the stars in the sky. Remember the vastness of our universe, the wonder and the awe of God's creation. That's what those lights symbolize. They're not just pretty, they symbolize light and goodness and God's presence among us. May that be so for all of us as we proceed through the Advent season. Thanks be to God. Amen. You can remain seated for our next hymn.
expectantly, longingly, anxiously, thoughtfully. The darkness is our friend. In the darkness of the womb, we have all been nurtured and protected. In the darkness of the womb, the Christ child was made ready for the journey into the light. You are with us, O oh God, in darkness and in light. It is only in darkness that we can see the splendor of the universe, blankets of stars, the solitary glowing of distant planets. It was the darkness that allowed the Magi to find the star that guided them to where the Christ child lay. You are with us, O oh God, in darkness and in light. In the darkness of night, desert peoples find relief from the cruel, relentless heat of the sun. In the blessed desert darkness, Mary and Joseph were able to flee with the infant Jesus to safety in Egypt. You are with us, O oh God, in darkness and in light. In the darkness of sleep, we are soothed and restored, healed and renewed. In the darkness of sleep, dreams rise up. God spoke to Jacob and Joseph through dreams. God is speaking still. You are with us, O oh God, in darkness and in light. In the solitude of darkness, we sometimes remember those who need God's presence in a special way. The sick, the unemployed, the bereaved, the persecuted, the homeless, those who are demoralized and discouraged, those who fear has turned to cynicism, those whose vulnerability has become bitterness. Sometimes in the darkness, we remember those who are near to our hearts, colleagues, partners, parents, children, neighbors, friends. Especially this week, we hold death if she faces surgery and Valley in the hospital, and those who cannot be with us today because they can't travel or whatever the reason. We thank God for their presence and ask God to bless and protect them in all they do, at home, at school, as they travel, as they work, and as they play. You are with us, O oh God, in darkness and in light. Sometimes, in the solitude of darkness, our fears and concerns, our hopes and our visions to rise to the surface. We come face to face with ourselves and with what lies ahead for us. And in that same darkness, we find companionship for the journey. In that same darkness, we sometimes allow ourselves to wonder and to worry whether the human race is going to survive. We know that you are with us, O oh God, yet we still await your coming in the darkness that contains both our hopelessness and our expectancy. We watch for a sign of God's hope. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we bring ourselves into the sanctuary. We bring the gifts we have to offer, our substance, our talents, our time. And so we dedicate... So we dedicate our offering this morning to the work of Christ's light and goodness, that we might all see it, carry it, and believe in it. Amen. Please join me in a prayer of dedication. Stand up. God of the universe, thank you for the ways you have shown me your goodness. Your word says that we will find joy in offering our time, talents, and money to meet the needs of others. 
and our experience show us the goodness in giving. Help us to give freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom. May you cause the seeds that we sow to grow into well-watered, fruitful trees of life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face to shine upon us. Turn our faces toward your promise. And help us to find that it is through giving that we receive. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Cease to breathe your spirit 
into my awakening soul. And now share with me the Great Commission. Go forth into the world and serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.